everybody, I'm Jody Lynn Jordan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I am the owner of Palmetto Resin Art here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm excited to have you here today. So here's what we're gonna be doing. Um, I did a acrylic pour on a 12 inch round canvas the other day, and it is called Mysterious Sea on my website. So um, because I live so close to the ocean, a lot of things that I do are ocean and beach oriented, but I do do a lot of other things as well. So please head on over to my website at www.palmettoresinart.com and I would love to be able to sell you a piece of artwork. So here's what we're doing today. I'm actually gonna turn and hold this up for you. This is the 12 inch round acrylic canvas that I poured the other day. It is completely dry. I let it dry about three days because I was a little bit nervous about pouring some acrylic over it and maybe having some of my colors slide. So I have already taped the back of it, as you can see, and I just taped right up to the edge. Now I am using the um, one that is for sharp lines, and I always use this one. I've tried a bunch of different ones, and they really didn't either one stick as well, or two, they didn't really give you a crisp line. So um, do tape the edges, because you are gonna have drips from when your resin dries and I will actually show you how to get those off later. So don't worry about that and let's get started. This is gonna be exciting. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is mixing our resin. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So I use a company called Art Resin and it is one of my favorites. Um, they will send you, if you buy it in a gallon, they'll send it to you with, um, when you do the gallon set, they're gonna send you one gallon of each one. So this one is the resin and this one is the hardener. So the important part about this is it's a one in one. So I mix two ounces, which I'm gonna show you right here. I mix two ounces of the resin and two ounces of the hardener. So that's what I put into my cup and you'll actually be able to see them and they'll separate, but you need to either use this measurement or you need to use the part one of one. Don't use any of these that are over here because these don't, don't go for this. This is part one of one. So you can either do part one to here and then part one to here or two to two, three to three, four to four or five to five. And that's it. I seem to find out that it's easier if I just do the ounces. So I'm kind of guessing on this one that I'm gonna need about four ounces. I'll probably have some left over and that's okay. Um, I can always use it for something else. So I mix two of the regular, two of the other one. Now, what I will tell you is as you start to mix your resin, it's going to become cloudy and it's going to look cloudy like this. But don't worry, as long as you put the proportions in here correctly, which I did the two and two, it's going to mix and it's gonna be clear. Now, you're not doing eggs, so you don't wanna really whip it good because it makes a lot of bubbles if you do that which are either one, hard to get out now, or two, hard to get out later. So I just mix mine. Make sure that you're scraping the edges really well. Bring your stirring stick around and scrape the edges. Make sure that it's completely mixed and do this for three to five minutes. Now I kind of do it based on um, when it really starts to look clear, but I fold it like you're folding cake batter um, because again, you don't want to whip it. It just makes more bubbles. All right, give me a moment. I'll get to mixing and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're all set up here. And as you can see, I have my gloves on. Um, that is really important when you're working with resin. Resin is a chemical and um, I don't know exactly what all it can do to your skin other than the fact that it is extremely sticky and it can quickly turn into a, a horrific mess. So um, I already have my thing here, our piece that we're working on. I have it up on some wood. Um, because I want to be able to let it drain off. Remember, we already have the back of it taped, so it's ready to go. Now, the next thing is making sure that it's level. Use a level, don't guess, you'll never get it right. Always make sure that it's level, check it in both directions, and that's it. So we have our resin here and it is completely clear. It does have quite a few bubbles in it, so one of the things that you can do is use a culinary torch before you even start and just kind of pop some of the bubbles out of here. You don't wanna hold it on here really long. You just wanna hit it quickly and stop. Now I'm gonna stir my resin up. Now keep in mind, if you get resin warm, it will make it thinner than it already is. 
So we don't want it to be super thin, so we wanna be very careful in doing that. So if you make sure that your um, table is level, then you make sure that your artwork is level, and then you're ready to pour. Always pour in the center because it's going to run outwards. And I always pour a little bit in the center, and then I kind of start to work it out this way. And I always save a little bit in my cup. Number one, I might need it for something else or a little repair here as we go along. But number two, leave your stick in it, critical. If you leave your stick in one of these TCP cups, when the resin hardens, you can literally pull it out like a popsicle stick and it will be on there like a popsicle. So I do wanna hit this with my torch really quickly. I wanna get any little surface bubbles out that are in here. And I don't know if you can see, but they're going away. So we've kind of heated it a little bit. It's a little bit of a cool day here in South Carolina. It's about 70 degrees. So I'm gonna take my hands, and as you can see, you can see the resin moving. I'm just gonna go ahead and glide my hand over the resin. Now, if there's a spot on here that needs resin or doesn't have it, you're gonna know because your hand is not gonna glide there. So as you move it across, it should move and just glide. It should be like sliding on glass almost. So as you go around. And I also want to make sure that I get it onto the edges. So just kind of roll it around the edges. And these edges you have to be really careful with because they're a little bit pleated. They're pleated because this is a round canvas. So I have some pleated areas that I need to make sure that I get covered. So I continually go around it. You can move it around, pick it up, however you want to do. Don't move it a whole lot. But if you need it to, to move it or slide it or something, you can do that. Um, a lot of people will just let their resin run over the edges. I honestly think that's a waste of resin because if you do it to where you're rubbing it on the sides just very lightly, very gently, you rub it and you'll be able to feel because it'll slide around. So over here I have a little bit of an issue. It's not sliding really well. So I'm taking some resin from the top. Now resin is self-leveling which is such a beautiful thing, it really is. Um, if any of you have ever um, worked with self-leveling paint um, or anything like that, you will know it comes out beautiful. So I always try to kind of rub my fingers across, try to make sure that my resin is a little bit even before I stop playing with it. And then just always go back and check your sides. You have extra if you need it. You know, we used four ounces on this, more than enough. And we're gonna come around. And I never touch my equipment or things with resin on my hands, because I don't want it to either, one, eat through some of my equipment or um, do anything else. And we are gonna put a torch on this. So with that being said, I am done with my resin, with covering this with the resin, and I'm taking my gloves off. I am not gonna touch any more resin with my hands. But I am gonna use, this is a culinary torch. I just got it off of Amazon, it was relatively cheap, but I'm going to fire it up. Now, when we talk about settings, you don't want it to be really high because it's gonna be a vicious flame. You wanna cut this back some. We wanna heat it, but not burn it. You can burn resin. The other thing I will tell you is, if you are going to torch resin, you should be wearing a mask. I have a mask I do wear, Sometimes, sometimes I do not. And I will tell you the only times I don't when I'm heating resin is when our ventilation is on in my art studio. So it is set up to remove anything like that and it actually circulates the air relatively quickly. And so I won't. But if I'm mixing resin, I don't really have an odor to the art resin brand. And, um, but when you heat it, there is a smell to it. It can become noxious and people will say that they don't feel well with it. I haven't personally had that happen. Um, when I do larger pictures or something with resin where I'm heating it up quite a bit to get it to really flow or I have to use a heat gun on it instead of a torch to really move that resin out um, and I'm doing that for over a period of time, I definitely will wear it because it will give me a migraine. We're not gonna put it directly on it because we don't wanna burn it. We're just gonna put it above it and we're gonna move very, very quickly. And you can see the bubbles here coming out. We're gonna go straight around the sides, be very careful. 
keep it a little bit further away. You don't need to be super close to it. We didn't have any rough spots, so we know that we got it all covered. And we're gonna go over it again. You wanna keep sweeping and a motion because if you stop, you're gonna burn your resin. I don't know what that is, but it's something that I can actually move around. So I'm gonna physically move that off my canvas. It is something and it's right there. Remember, this is self-leveling. So when something like this happens, don't be afraid to scrape it. You're about to see it come off. It's whatever that was right there that just hit the mat. So we're gonna go back and I kind of use this to kind of schmooze over. And you'll hear me say that word quite a lot, like I just schmoozed right over that. Right, so now we're back to looking good. I don't know if that was a little piece. I do clean my containers out after I use them. The TCP containers are reusable. And so I do reuse them and I do wash them and clean them between each one with soap and water and thoroughly let them dry. Okay, so like I said, about every 10 minutes, you wanna come back and hit this with a torch for about an hour. Um, and we'll go over it one more time how to do it to make sure because for whatever reason, and, and inevitably it happens, bubbles will continue to come up out of the resin. And as you see them, you won't be able to pop them without a torch. So once you put the heat on it, and you don't wanna use a heat gun because a heat gun has a lot of force to it with the blow. So you actually thin the resin out and actually blow it off the canvas. So don't do that, um, get the torch and it takes butane, it fills up right here. And we're gonna go over it one more time here. We put a little bit closer this time, but we're still off of it. If you can see, I'm right here. And we're going to just continue with a sweeping motion. I do it both ways. Some people don't. I just wanna make sure that I didn't miss a spot with my when I actually went over it. And you wanna make sure that you cover your resin. I don't know what it is for whatever reason. Um, it happens and it happens all the time. A gnat or a fly will get in here and it's ruined. So I use a big plastic bin and I cover my stuff. I just have um, a couple of plastic bins, but this one is my main one and it covers from edge to edge on my table. And that way nothing can happen to my project. I will come back in about 24 hours and check on it. So stay tuned. Hi guys, and this is Jody Lynn Jordan with Palmetto Resin Art here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I wanted to come back and we're gonna look at the final project today. I poured it on Friday afternoon and it's now Sunday morning. So I wanted to kind of see where we were and um, check out our project. So also um, something really cool. So this is actually the Palmetto Palm Tree for the state of South Carolina and the Crescent Moon is here. And my husband got me this as a present. I think he's trying to give me um, the creative idea that maybe I should stop ruining so many of my clothes with paint. Um, so we're gonna wear it. So um, give me one second and we're gonna show you what we've got. Okay, so um, I have my TCP cup here that we used the other day when we poured. And as you can see, there is a little bit of resin left and I left the stick in it. So we're gonna pull this. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit creative, maybe put your finger on here to kind of, but you can see it's already starting to lift in the bottom of there. And we're just gonna use the stick to slowly pull it out. Now it doesn't usually completely clean the sides, but it does a pretty good job. And you can see it coming out here. I still wash them, but there you go. All right, so on to our finished product. So we have our finished item here. As you can see, it's very shiny. The sides are covered. Looks like glass. You can actually see um, the window that's behind me. So there is a couple of little flaws and imperfections in it, but not enough to be concerned. And I see maybe like two little micro bubbles in it. But other than that, it's absolutely beautiful. Remember we covered the sides well, so you can see that. 
and there's those pleats again. So now I'm gonna show you how to manage this, all of this, where it's stuck on here with the tape. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's because it's a round canvas, it did not stick well right there. And it's still sticky on the back side. Hold on, let me put it down so you can see it. You can see I have drips in there. I'm honestly just gonna clip those off and not really worry about them. So um, you also wanna be careful when resin is still not completely hardened. It takes about 30 days for it to completely harden. So you really wanna be careful not to lay it on something rough. So I do put it on a little piece of plastic that's completely flat. But I'm gonna show you here how we're gonna use a heat gun. This is just, I have a Seek One heat gun that I bought at um, Amazon and I wait for it to get kind of warm. Um, I also make sure I turn it down a little bit because I wanna be able to kind of touch it when I do it. So I'm gonna just come around here and we're just gonna heat a little bit and just hold it on there. And I turned it up to the second notch, which is like the second level of heat, kind of gives you that extra boost. And you can see it's starting to peel back. And this part, like I mentioned, I think the resin ran underneath it right here. Because I can see where the resin is really stuck. And then I'll show you a little bit more and then we'll fast forward it and we'll be gone. So you just want to heat it a little bit and then lightly pull it up. So this is where I had to do it a couple of times. So we're going to have to kind of heat this part up and move it forward. And if you need to, like there's a little piece stuck right here. It's not ruined. Don't panic. Heat it up a little bit. And I always want to try to guide people on how to fix things because, and there's that little piece. Um, because I don't want you to panic when you're doing something and think, oh my gosh, I just ruined this. You know what? It's never ruined. It's art. Um, art is different for each person. It looks different for each person. Um, you know, I went to the school for creative and performing arts for nine years. So art looked different to every single person that I knew, um, including my brother, who is also an artist. So, um, you know, it just takes time and patience. And see, this one's actually coming off really well. Sometimes they're horribly stuck. And when I say horribly stuck, I mean horribly stuck. Like this was putting it over acrylic on the bottom. So it looks like it's coming off pretty good. But like I mentioned, had it of not, we would have had to have fast forwarded this. So, yeah, so that's off. So I wanna try to show you a quick and easy fix to kind of fix these little knob issues that are on here where the drips were. It's not a super creative thing. Um, it literally is my wire cutters. <laughs> um, I think some people probably do it differently. I'm not really sure how they do it. I wire cut them off just because I want it to sit flat. If somebody wants to put this on the wall um, and they want to, it to sit flat, there, we're gonna need to get rid of these. So it seems to cut them pretty easily. I never really stress about things, like I said. Um, it's kind of stuck right there to my cutter. And I don't know if I can show you this any closer here on the side. So there's like a big one right here. And we're just gonna snip that off. And it's, now it's gone. So I only really do the ones that I think would um, actually cause it to not lay well on the wall. So like there's one right here, snip that off. That's a little bit further down. Some people say like sanding it. I don't know that that's necessary. Um, I've sanded before, don't get me wrong. I do have a power hand sander and I do sand um, when I do like wood and things like that, or if the back of one of my acrylics really turns out to be a hot mess, and um, you know, nobody wants that, then I will get the power sander out. But normally if it's something that's not that big of a deal, I will just go through and trim them off. See, that's not bad. That one still has a little bit of a high bump, 
but it's not bad. It's a little bit right here, but that's not really going to bother me because it's on the inside of that. So, and if you need to, especially if you have a canvas, you can just kind of lift up the edge that you need to trim. I trim that. I'm pulling on it and be careful not to cut your fingers. But that is a ton better. The rest of it looks great on the back. So I don't really have any issues along the back anywhere. Right here were where my, all my problems were. And I've kind of trimmed those off. So, all right. Well, stay tuned.